Upon returning from our rather whirlwind and hectic European trip, I took advantage of the horrendous jet lag and 3am wake up to take Poppy for a walk a little earlier in the day than I normally would. Here we are testing her new dog friendly co harness. I love that it can be customised with her name, but the name pads are removable if you decide you don't want to use them. On their website, they also show you how to measure your dog so that you can be sure you're ordering the correct size. The harness itself is very sturdy and I particularly like the quality of the fastenings, which unlike many other harnesses, are not plastic. If you are interested in a new harness for your fairy friend, you can use Top Note 15 for a discount. I will link all of their details in the description box below. This discount is entirely for you, it is not an affiliate code and I'm not earning commission on sales. Good morning, we are home, it's Monday morning. I have been up since about four o'clock. We actually got back on Saturday, but I've just been, you know, spending the last day or so recovering from this cold that I picked up while I was overseas. And, you know, obviously uh, severely jet lagged. We always get really jet lagged coming back this way. Uh, going over to Europe, is fine normally where the flights tend to work out we tend to arrive in the evening and then you just go to bed and you wake up the next day feeling you know pretty good but not so coming back this way it always seems to be that we end up flying in the morning and you're trying to stay awake all day anyway so we're home i have so much to do uh, it's monday morning but i still have today and tomorrow off i'm not due back to work until wednesday i'm just so happy to be home <laughs> Okay, so first things first, this is my <laughs> outfit of the day. I'm just wearing my Cezanne knit. I can't remember what this one's called. Uh, my Ralph Lauren jeans, which I took on holiday with me, I might add, and I absolutely loved them and I still love them. Obviously, I'm still wearing them. I did wash them when I got back and now I'm wearing them again. <laughs> so <laughs> despite the fact that I've pretty much worn these jeans every day for the last two weeks and uh, my little Frankie for mules which have been everywhere with me over the last couple of years ignore the mess in the background obviously i do have some tidying up to do still sort of half unpacked and i've just thrown all of the office related stuff on the floor up here so need to be doing some tidying up today anyway so that's what i'm wearing i haven't picked my scent of the day yet so let's head over to the perfume cabinet and check it out you know now that i'm back and i have all of my perfumes available to me it's really hard to choose <laughs> because I want to wear all of them and I can't um, but I tell you what there was one perfume that I did try in Paris the, I tried the x-ray of Shalimar in store and I absolutely loved it I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't buy it I had the opportunity to buy it and I didn't despite the fact that I bought lots of new perfumes and I, you know logically I would think that I would want to wear one of those I think actually I want to wear Shalimar today the question though is which Shalimar am I going to wear so this is um, Shalimar Filtre de Parfum um, this is Shalimar Cologne hmm. I think I just want normal Shalimar oh maybe I want no, I don't feel like vanilla planifolia. Oh gosh, this cold is driving me more bonkers. That's normal Shalimar. Yeah, see, uh, in my head I was thinking, and it was partly I think I was influenced by Matt as well because when I had the Shalimar X-ray on, he's like, you, but you wear Shalimar all the time at home and, um, you know, it's not his favourite, <laughs> even though it's my favourite. And so I was like, yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, that, so I used that as a justification for not buying the X-ray, but now I'm really kicking myself because the X-ray was beautiful and it is quite different to it is quite different to the Eau de Parfum. I think I might actually wear the Filtra. So the Filtra is a bit more irisy and kind of less citrusy in the top, uh, which I quite like. Although that's funny. I mean, it is kind of citrusy, but it's more of a vanillic citrus, whereas the um, original Shalimar is citrus is a lot darker. Anyway, I think that's enough. Okay, so first errand that I have to run today is that I have to take this jacket in to be repaired. This jacket I took to Spain with me and I tore it. I was so upset. I love this jacket. It's one of my favorite jackets. Yeah, I think because it was so cold and this probably, I should have taken the thicker leather jacket with me because this is very thin. It doesn't even really have a lining in it. 
And I think on one of the days I was just wearing too many layers underneath and it was just a bit too much. And when I tried to put it on, it just tore. So I'm really upset about that. So I'm going to try and see if I can get that fixed. And then also I have these lovely, let me just pull them out into the sun, um, new pants from Country Road. I have a pair of these in a green colour, which you may have seen, but I decided to get a second pair because I really, really love them. They're very lightweight wool. They're pure wool pants, very lightweight, so really great for our climate, particularly in the summertime. And I just love this truffle colour. It's really, really beautiful. So I just need to take these into the tailors and get them taken up. <laughs> That's my wedding dress, which I picked up from the dry cleaners yesterday today. It took months for it to come back. I'm a bit annoyed with myself actually because I had the opportunity to have them box it up nicely and I thought no no I won't need to do that because I'm going to sell it and now I'm not sure. Yeah now now I'm not sure that I want to sell it. I'm actually wondering if there's a way that I can alter it to actually reuse it because I mean after all it was a dress that was made for me to fit my body and it feels like such a shame to sell it when I've got this dress that fits me perfectly. Although that said, I have not tried it on recently. It'd be interesting to see if it still fits. I mean, I don't want to keep it and then just have it stuffed away in a box and never do anything with it. If I'm going to keep it, I want to alter it so that I can wear it again. You know, it's a wedding dress and I'm trying to figure out a way to alter it without it looking and feeling like a wedding dress. couldn't find her. <laughs> I just spent the last 10 minutes looking for her because I couldn't figure out where she'd gone. I thought I had lost you somehow. <laughs> Funny dog. The weather is turning cold, isn't it, Popple? Hello, hello. It is about half past three in the afternoon just come off several meetings so I have been tied up most of the day and I have been playing around with a couple of perfumes so I just wanted to come on here and share my thoughts. So this one is one that I got in the mail today. This is by Philly and Phil. This one is called Out of the Opera. Out at the Opera I should say. So this was sent to me as part of a a perfume subscription that I've been subscribed to for many years now and uh, sometimes when I haven't been in there for a while and I haven't selected the ones that I want they will just send me something randomly and I think this might be one of the random ones or maybe not I don't know uh, it does sound by title it sounds like something that I would pick but as it is a, a rose and oud fragrance I sort of feel like maybe I wouldn't have picked it but it is interesting and it is quite different to most other rose ouds that I've tried I haven't tried obviously a lot of rose ouds because I just don't get along with rose and oud that much so I gave up pretty early on in the piece sampling rose and oud fragrances because usually I don't really care for them but this one actually isn't too bad um, it's quite a powdery rose and what I liked about it is that there is quite a lot of spice in here as well. There's some cinnamon, there's some dark fruits, I think there's musket, there's some plum as well and I don't necessarily pick up those specific fruits although I've only sort of sampled it today. I haven't really played with it that much but what I liked about it was that those spices and the fruits weren't super overpowering and you still got that beautiful sort of light powdery rose coming through at least in the beginning and it didn't sort of and it didn't feel like a smack in the face spice market type scenario which sometimes I quite like I, I am quite partial to a spicy you know Marrakesh style spice market vibe but not always and particularly lately I've really been gravitating more towards florals as you've probably ascertained from you know my videos over the past 12 months really yeah so this was this is quite nice I've I've enjoyed sort of sampling it today however 
Um, the try down hasn't really agreed with me that much. I don't know if it's like some kind of ambery wood vibe that's going on, but I think it might be like the spices in combination with, you know, maybe a woody note or even just those fruits and florals that have sort of amalgamate into mm, something that's a little bit almost sour but sour isn't quite the right word on me it does smell a little bit in the realm of stale skin or if that makes any sense how can skin be stale but you know um it's just a bit of a sour edge to the spices in the woods, I think. And it could be the fruits that are doing that. Who knows? Who knows what's doing it? The fact is after, you know, a couple of hours on my skin, I'm not really enjoying it as much as I was enjoying it in the opening. I don't know if that's going to happen on everybody or if it's just me. It's a bit of a shame because I quite enjoyed the opening. I can see now smelling it again, how what I'm getting in the dry down has appeared because it's kind it is kind of there from the beginning but before I just didn't really pay that much attention to it because I guess I was more focused on the interesting composition of the spices and the rose and the fruits when I read the note listing well it's not really an extensive note listing but it just says orange pink pepper musket oud vanilla plum rose and cinnamon and I really expected something way more ambery but I was really intrigued by the fact that actually it's quite spicy and fruity and that the oud isn't overpowering at all, but it's definitely present. So anyway, that is a no from me. I shall be putting that one aside to pass on to somebody else. But another one that I've been playing with today is this little travel size of La De Sur De Siam by... Du Cedar Parfums. This is a little 15 mil that I got in a coffret because I have a lot of Du Cedar Parfums <laughs> perfumes already. And at that point, I was kind of getting to the end of like the line of what I could choose to be in the coffret that I didn't already have. And it's interesting because I sampled this a few years ago during 2020. Uh, my friend Eve from Eve Spider Smells talked quite highly of this perfume at the time. Um, I think she might still have a video up if you wanted to go check it out or I'll try and find a link to it and put it below. She spoke very highly of it. I had a sample of it and I didn't particularly care for it. And that's probably because at the time I wasn't, Mm, I think it's incorrect for me to say that I wasn't into florals, but I definitely wasn't that into rose at the time. And this is quite a green, fresh rose. And I, yeah, I didn't, it wasn't the type of rose that I particularly cared for. And what's interesting about that is the fact that in here, the rose is very fresh and it comes off, it's quite photorealistic. It smells like a real rose petal. Like if you were to shove your face into a, into a rose bud, it, I think this is what it would smell like um, because of the, it's got this very photorealistic petally vibe about it. So it, sm it smells more realistic, but at the time of the rose perfumes that I could appreciate, I mostly was liking things that were quite, I guess, synthetic and fake smelling. So that was how I kind of got into Rose was actually via something that didn't really represent the smell of Rose in nature. So it's interesting when I think about that because it's probably the, also the way I got into vanilla as well, but that's another story. So this has been an absolute delight to wear today. It has been quite a gloomy day. It's very rainy it's been raining all day it's quite cool I'm obviously you know rugged up a little bit and this is probably not the type of perfume that most people would say that they would reach for on a gloomy wet day um, it's not a wintry perfume it's probably more of a spring perfume but it has just been such a it's like been, been like a breath of fresh air for me today um as i have been huddling inside it hasn't been that cold i mean we haven't got heaters on or anything like that but i do have my ugg boots on 
<laughs> and I do have a jumper. So, um, which, you know, for us here in Brisbane, that's a sign of it being, I guess, fairly cool. Anyway, this has been an absolute delight. I, I think I, I need to wear it a bit more to be able to talk about it in a little bit more detail, but I certainly intend to. Good morning. Oh my goodness, it's so cold. It's so cold. Oh, I love winter. I love it. Bobby, bring the paper here. She goes out and gets the paper every morning. Here. Hello, Bobby. She brings the paper in and then I give her a treat. Come here. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> anyway, it's about six o'clock. Uh, Matt went off to Pilates about half an hour ago and I am putting my shoes on and then I'm heading to the gym. My goodness, it is so cold. <laughs> and I know I say, I'm saying it's cold, but I know that there's people who <laughs> watch this who live in legitimately very cold climates. I don't even know what the temperature is. Hey Siri, what's the temperature right now? Eight degrees, it's eight degrees. It's not even, I mean, that's still cold, right? For the rest of the world as well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're not used to it. So I'm off to the gym. My scent of the morning is clean musk. I, I really need a tissue, but you're sitting on the tissue box. So my scent of the morning is Clean Musk by Sarah Horowitz, but I also spritzed a tiny, tiny little bit of um, Untan de Roses over the top. So I've got a little bit of a rosy smell going on. Earlier this week, I got my hands on a decant of Love Delight by Amouage, and I wore it yesterday as a full wear. I didn't wear anything else. And I, I actually really like it. Um, I know that it's been kind of poo-pooed and people were saying it's boring and it's not worth... Look, even I said it, I didn't think it was worth the money. And given that the bottles just went up in price by $100 over the weekend, all Amouage fragrances went up by $100 in Australia over the weekend. They were $4.99 before, now they're $5.99 Australian. <laughs> Uh, and that's across the board, every store. Um, I think uh, our perfumery and the one of the department stores, David Jones, their prices went up first and Maya's price hike didn't kick in until Monday morning. But everybody, like now all Amouage perfumes are basically $600 a bottle. That is insane. Um, so <laughs> needless to say, I will not be paying $600 for Love Delight, even though I think it's delightful. I just, yeah, I, I mean, obviously the opening is the star of the show there. It is a beautiful opening with the ginger and the heliotrope um, and the orange blossom. Oh, it's, it's really good. Um, there's a bit of a rum note in there as well. And there's just like, but it doesn't come off as a dark rum at all. It's, it's there. You can smell, you can kind of get hints of this rumminess, but it's not, I wouldn't call it a boozy fragrance by any means. Anyway, I I really like it. I really like it a lot. I was just in heaven yesterday. I ended up, I think I've got a five mil decant and I'm almost halfway through the five mil decant already because <laughs> I just kept spraying myself all throughout the day. I absolutely loved it, loved it. Um, not that I had to keep spraying myself, but I just wanted to get that opening again, you know? It was so good. I'll have to wait for a bottle of that, but I, I, I think I will be keeping my eyes peeled for somebody selling off a bottle in the future because um, it really, I, I really like it. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's a crowd pleaser, yes. It's not your typical amouage, no. It's not that challenging, but you know, I can't remember where I saw, it, saw the comment. It might have been on one of John's videos, Scented Snowdrops, and I should probably pick you up, shouldn't I? And he was taught, I think he was reviewing the new Amouage. I was reading through the comments and somebody had said, follow the creator, not the brand. Um, 
in other words, follow Christopher Chong instead of following the brand. And I totally agree with that because anyone, anyone who's been poo-pooing Amouage over the last few years, um, you know, really they, they just haven't appreciated the style change between the Chong and Samon. And, and look, that's fine. You can't like everybody and, you know, brands bring in new creative directors for a multitude of reasons or creative directors leave because they want to go explore and try new things. And, and that's totally fine. I mean, people have to live their lives and move on. <laughs> so, and, and different people will have different style and that's just, that's just how it is. I appreciate the fact that Amouage were willing to bring on a creative director that wasn't just going to continue the same stuff. Um, you know, they were willing to experiment with a different style you know, I, 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 I see value in that. I, I think that's, it's great to be, it's great that a brand is open-minded, I guess. Anyway, I'm rambling. I need, to, and I'm procrastinating because I've got to go to the gym and I've got to do a run on the treadmill and then I've got an upper body session with my trainer. So yes. And if I want to be, I mean, there's no way that I'm going to be looking cut in my swimsuit by next week, but <laughs> We do what we can when we can and uh, it's time for me to get my butt into the gym. <laughs> <laughs>